Hello and welcome back to yet another Rivet tutorial. Um, today we are covering a very important topic of function calling. Um, yeah, function calling basically means that you are giving tools or functions to uh, an LLM or actually usually to ChatGPT. I will explain why specifically ChatGPT in a second um, so that you can enhance it with functions that it usually doesn't have. Let's do a super, super quick and simple example. We will just run the graph and yeah, we will just ask chat the GP what is the current date? Let's see what it comes up with. Um, oh, the 1st October 2021. Uh, close one, close one. <clears throat> and basically, if we give it functions, for example, the function to, to get the date, we can get our answer back here. We can see the current date is January the 4th, 2024. And yeah, of course there is much, much, much more use cases for this. Maybe you want to give it functions like GPT-4 has, like you, that it's allowed to open websites on its own or trigger a web search, or you could connect like um, Dolly to it or something or some other image generation service and give it a function for that. Basically, yeah, this means you are enhancing the capabilities by a lot. Please note, function calling is not always the most reliable thing because basically you are saying, telling ChatGPT, okay, here are like, here's one function or here's maybe a list of 10 functions and you decide what you do. It's your job to decide that. And that can work. And especially with GPT-4, it works mostly okay but it can also not work. It can use them wrongly. It cannot use them. It can use the wrong function at the wrong time. So if you want to be safe and have a most stable system, try to solve everything with semantic routing first. That is a video I just did before. Just check out my other video because there you have the control and there you can see if there was a certain user query that led to a wrong behavior, you can just add it to the list. Um, for a certain route in the future that you make sure that this will not happen anymore. But yeah, if you have a pretty uh, complex setup where you need the AI to make certain decisions because there's so much that could happen or could be asked of the AI, then function calling is for sure the way to go. Okay, um, sorry for the very long introduction, but I think it was necessary. Um, so let's take a look. Basically, <clears throat> Uh, for function calling to work, first of all, we need some function. And I created some graph for you here, so which helps us generate some functions also using GPT-4 because we need some, uh, we need um, certain informations and certain JSON objects for this to be able to create them. So let's just do this. And let's say um, I want a function to open the window of my car. I mean, of course, if we doesn't matter now, I'm just doing a random example. And now I have built a system prompt here, which instructs that, that it creates a function for us in the proper format, or it can also create multiple functions. And let's see, it's still working. Okay, and now we are extracting, um, yeah, we are getting the response, we're extracting the JSON, we are extracting the function, um, object out of it and then we're getting the name so it's used created a function or, or suggests to create a function called open car window um, here's a description of the function for the llm opens the specified window of a car and then it created a function and it actually um, yeah let's make this bigger <clears throat> it suggests to create a function with uh, where the, uh, there are two parameters there's a window which can be a string, which is defining what window to open, driver, passenger, rear left, rear right, and then there's a percentage of how much to open the window from zero to 100. And basically this is, yeah, the description how the function works. So if we want to create this as a, use this as a function, we create the GPT function node, and now we need to input those informations. I mean, of course we can also manually input this, but this here is a useful helper, I think, to get you started with how everything needs to be and then you can adjust the function as you see fit and then we would now copy the whole parameters in here whoops to marked more than i wanted it um, yeah 
And now we would have um, our function, which has a name, a description, so that the LLM knows when to use it, which has fields, which expected data types, also descriptions to help the um, to help show GPT to use it and so on. It also tells us what the required fields are. So both window and percentage must be set for the function to work, which makes sense. Okay, now we could uh, use this in the graph I will show you now to, um, yeah, to do it. So let's actually do that. Let's copy this one. Uh, let's delete it here. And let's actually put it in just for the fun of it. So now we can do uh open the driver's window halfway let's see what it does and now we can see that it is actually calling our function instead of responding with the text it's giving us it's doing a function call which we are getting um, of the function call output from the chat note and you can see it filled the arguments window to driver the percentage to 50 percent this looks great it now knows how to change uh, to to uh, yeah how to um, open the window. I and mean, of course, we don't have the function connected here. I don't have my car connected to Rivet, but theoretically, you see what is everything is possible. Everything you can now create in Rivet to actually do something will work. And note, uh, there's one more important thing here. There is this call, this ID here, and we need to have this value when we later want to. Um, feedback the result of the function call to ChatGPT to inform it that it happened successfully or maybe your functions which I mean maybe there could be like uh, also this function could throw an error like drivers window is stuck uh, or whatever uh, then you will need this ID but we will see this in practice okay let's remove this again and let's stick with the two functions we have um, I have two very simple functions here the first is the current date time which we already saw um and the second one is triggering a toast event which is just a small alert box which we can see in rivet and this one is very simple so sorry first let's check this one here current date time does not have any properties because we, we don't need any input we just it always returns the date time of today so no inputs and the other one here to the for the toast event we want the message to be shown in there uh in a, in a field called message so that is what we are informing uh, ChatGPT about here. Okay, and then first of all, it's super simple. We are connecting our GPT functions into an array. And this array goes to the functions port. And this port can be activated here. And we could also even force ChatGPT to use a certain function. So let's assume we had the semantic routing active. We could also just um, force it to use a function now uh, by, so, uh, by selecting it here. Because we can do function and then we can uh, pick the name in here. But let's uh, keep it on auto. <clears throat> okay, and let's actually run the time example again. Uh, what, is, what date is it today? Um, sorry. So we are doing this. And now. Um, it's answer. It's using the current date time function, as we can see. Um, to proceed with this, uh, we are now destructuring the function call object, and we are basically um, getting three values: the name, the argument, and the ID. And then we are automatically getting three output ports here. And as you can see, arguments are empty, so it's just an empty object. But we have the ID and the name. And now. We need to decide uh, which function it is and where to handle it. And this is very simply done by creating a match node. We are putting the name into the test node. So that is what is being checked. So basically, if it matches current date time or trigger toast event. And we can, of course, add new functions in the future or change them here. And then if and then we are also adding the value to be passed, in this case, the arguments. So what this does now it is, um, in this case, we um, hit the current date time match. So this output port is being used and the value that's being sent through it is our empty arguments in this case. And then now this goes to the subgraph here for the current data. Let's take a look. This is a super simple subgraph. We do not need to use the arguments. 
So we are just using them to start the subgraph. And then there's a simple code node in here, which is just returning the current um, date time and, and we are outputting it again. And now for the last uh, step, we are feeding this back to uh, ChatGPT. So we are creating a prompt with a type function. This is important. And sorry, this is wrong. And for the um, name or the, it's also written in the tool call ID, we ac activated the, the input port. And this is where our ID here, our call ID is going. This is important. Um, since uh, since um, OpenAI introduced the assistance, even if you're using the normal chat, they are now expecting um, a new format where they want to know, always be informed what, um, yeah, what is the ID of the function that was called? What are you giving the results for? Otherwise, it will complain. The API will complain and not work. So we are putting that in, and we are of course putting in our results. So in this case, just this string with the date and time. And now we are assembling a prompt, which is just the all messages output from the previous chat, and our new prompt for the function. So basically, we can now see that uh, we are. We got the function call and we are answering the function call with the same matching ID. And now we are putting this back to the chat node and ChatGPT can properly answer. Today's date is January 4th, 2024. Of course, usually you might want to do this in a, in a loop uh, or maybe in not in a, probably not in a sequential order, but for simplicity of this tutorial, I kept it like this. Okay, and let's look at the other example with the toast message. Um, Saying subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, let's just do that. And oh, wait a second. Why do we not see that? Let's check it. It seems to have maybe made a mistake. Subscribe to. I mean, for for now, this looks good. It's triggering toast events. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Why did we not see that? And then we are again um, extracting the information. We are now going to the match node and we are matching trigger toast event and we are going to the subgraph. And huh. uh, there is some data issue here I need to fix as it seems. This is a bit odd, but I think I have an idea where this is, uh, where this is coming from. Let me try something. Uh, the destructure node, I also created a GitHub um, um, issue for this is not really keeping the date the, the data format sometimes so I think this will be the issue let's just try to reach run it yeah okay this is also not working wait let's make this a string let's try yeah now it's working subscribe to my YouTube channel so there is a bit of bugginess with the destructure node I mean I used so I will actually do it fix it differently quickly and just show you because somehow this is not uh, when it's outputting the data, sometimes it's malforming it in some way. So this is not a proper working object anymore. So now instead of getting the arguments from here, we are going to use an extract object path node. And we are going to put it here from the function call. And we are using this as our value. No. Uh, what did I do now? No, this is okay. This is our value. Oops. Oops. I'm sorry, I'm messing it up. And let's go one more time in here. And this needs to be an object again. And I think now it will be working again. Yeah, now it's working again. So I'm not sure. I, I prefer using the destructure node be, um, instead of using the object path node because you can do lots of destructuring in one node, but yeah, there is some bugginess with it, so you cannot use it for all cases. So often you have to fall back to the extract object path node as you saw here, or you have to uh, somehow um, correct or find a way to repair the data format, which is a bit of a pain. Yeah, but basically that is it. Um, I also explained here how to do your uh, create, create your own functions and add them. Um, I mean, I also showed it to you basically, but there's also the explanation here. As always, you will find the project file in uh, the links below. 
and yeah please like subscribe and tell me if you want to see more if you want to go more into depth see more complex examples or some specific examples uh, um, yeah just let me know see you and have a good day